Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, if I could just remind everybody quickly to please turn your cell phones on vibrate so that during the ceremony there are no surprises. Uh, good afternoon, faculty, staff, Dr. Kane, Dean May, families, and of course, graduates. I'm excited. <laughs> First, I would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional homelands of the Puyallup tribe. The Puyallup people have lived on and stewarded these lands since the beginning of time and continue to do so today. We recognize that this land acknowledgement is one small step towards true allyship and we commit to uplifting the voices, experience, and histories of the indigenous people of this land and beyond. Thank you so much. I feel privileged to welcome you to the 2021 Pierce College Nursing Program pinning ceremony. My name is Tiffany Smith Fromm, and this is my last time serving as the program director for this ceremony. Before I get started with my opening remarks, I would like to acknowledge some of the best faculty that you will ever meet. They work harder than most and keep students always as their focus. When I call their names, I would like them to rise. Vicki Dixon. Mindy Saw. Dr. D. Hughes. Dr. Maddie Brickle. Jennifer Evans. Rosalia Watson. And I saw her come in, but she is not in the stage. Uh, Professor Rita Anderson. She is in the audience today. Please give her a round of applause. We are missing some of our faculty today, but we are delighted that these folks have joined us. Furthermore, I wanted to acknowledge our wonderful staff, Stania Kajjan, Mar Marjo Burdick, who was super instrumental in making this day possible. Yes, she absolutely deserves that. And Michael Kushner, this department would not be possible without these dedicated humans. I am so lucky to call all of these folks my teammates. This is the last time I will address this group. So here I go. 2021 graduates, what a ride, huh? When you began your journey on September 23rd, 2019, I am sure you thought, wow, this is gonna be tough. Nursing school is supposed to be tough, right? You have heard from friends and likely colleagues that it can be arduous, even grueling. That first day of lab, you were all ready to go. I remember seeing some of you and knowing that you were going to love being a nurse. You were all amazing. You took nursing school in stride and did not attempt to make it more than it was. Second quarter came and you continued to be successful, entering into your first med surge course and being just as eager to learn every last thing the faculty were willing to teach. And then things changed. The worst pandemic to hit our lifetimes completely changed all of our worlds and we went from being together to being very much apart, alone. Not alone literally, but figuratively. I recognize that you had your loved ones to be your supports, but your nursing colleagues who had been there from the beginning were all of a sudden far removed from your lives. But did you let that stop you? Absolutely not. During this time, I, like along with many others, have done a lot of self-reflecting. A few weeks back, I was in Hallmark, and I'm sure you're like, what does this have to do with the, the pinning speech, right? <laughs> well, I found a book called Now is the Time, 170 Different Ways to Seize the Moment. As I was reading through it, I thought of you all, and here are some things I took that reminded me of you. 
You all had the opportunity to allow something that was completely unexpected to stop you, but you didn't. Helen Keller once said, I seldom think about my limitations, and they never make me sad. You never thought about your limitations during this time, and if you did, you pushed right through them. You persevered. Winston Churchill also once stated, Continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking our potential. Based on what I have witnessed from each one of you over the past year, I am confident that your potential is only limited by whatever it is you would like it to be. In other words, it's really limitless. You have made it to the end of your nursing school journey, and it is time for you to go out into the world. The next journey that you will embark upon will come with some of the same trials that you have faced during this time. But remember to enjoy the journey and to continue to be you. Abraham Lincoln once said, whatever you are, be a good one. I know that you will all be wonderful, competent, patient-centered nurses who will advocate daily for what is right. So I leave you with one final message. Please practice compassion for yourselves first and always. Then compassion for your families and friends and your colleagues. And of course, keep that drive and energy to be compassionate for your patients. And as Maya Angelou once said, try to be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. As, as a soon-to-be nurse, you are 30 rainbows just waiting to shine and to help someone else's day just get a little bit better. I am so proud of you. Cheers, congratulations, well done. All right, next on the agenda is our president's message. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Daryl Kane, president of Pierce College Puyallup, Dr. Kane arrived at Pierce College in two, July of 2018 to serve as our fifth president of Pierce College Puyallup. Dr. Kane started as a community college student where he began his academic journey at Pasadena City College. He earned his bachelor's degree in arts and sciences from Indiana University, Bloomington, his master's in college, uh, master's degree in college student personnel administration from Ball State University and his PhD in educational leadership and policy studies from Virginia Tech University. That's a lot, Dr. Kane. <laughs> Dr. Kane has held numerous positions such as Dean for Academic Affairs, Vice President for Teaching and Learning and Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. He enjoys teaching so that he can stay connected to students and stay youthful in the process. His personal mission is to help every individual to achieve at the, height, the heights of their fullest potential. He wants every person he contacts to know that he is a believer in them and he wants them to be a believer in themselves as well. Please join me in welcoming our president, Dr. Daryl Kane. All right, well, thank you very much. It's an honor and privilege to be with you today um, as we talk about this joyous moment and occasion. So um, one of the things that I always recognize, you know, when I started and think about students and their journey and their success, you know, um, but today is a reckoning for jubilation. Today is a reckoning that we must celebrate and enjoy all the things that have done, meaning that all the sacrifices you have made and so today is going to be a special occasion, a special moment for you as we talk about that transition now into your professional careers and journey. Um, but first of all, I just want to do a couple of thank yous, you know, because I think it's really important, you know, um, just to acknowledge those who have set the foundation. And so I'd like to first of all give thanks for the nursing department inviting me here today, allowing me to be in front of you. But more importantly, it's because of their tireless work and all of the efforts they have made to making sure that our students are able to learn in a safe environment. And so again, recognition for our faculty. Let's give them a round of applause again. All right. 
Also, too, just want to rec make sure that we recognize um, the importance, uh, because I think part two of this is when we say thank you and appreciation. Um, some may know, some may not know, but I think that recognizing that we have one of the top nursing programs in the nation, and one of the top states in the state, yes. So, in fact, if you do a Google search, whether you go to Registered Nursing Careers or if you go to registerednursing.org, you'll see Pierce College rank number one or two. And so that signifies you're amongst the best. Yes, it's because of our, our faculty members and what they've done. And so they have let the groundwork and allowed us to be um, one of the top rated institutions. Um, also, too, Pierce College, we're one of the top 10 colleges in the nation as well. And we recently completed the journey through our Aspen Institute, which is a, a think tank group. And so they basically ask institutions to identify in terms of meeting their mission and making sure that students are prepared for success in their journey. And we were ranked, never we in the top five the last go around two years ago, but again, we were still ranked in the top 10. So again, we pride ourselves. And so I just want to again, thank all of the faculty staff members who allowed us to continue that success. Next, I just really want to thank, you know, I think it's important also to recognize those who have provided support. And so that includes the spouses, the parents, the family, and the friends who allow and give you the necessary support for you to be here today. So let's give them a round of applause in order to well. And there may be times, you know, um, I think about sometimes when I was a, as a student as well, and you sometimes you think about, will I make it to this day? And today you have made it. You've done it, even though trials and tribulations as we talk about the pandemic, things you had to work through and get through. Also too, recognizing that if you have kids, and I know what it's like to have kids and make sure that they're fed and they complete their homework and they're tucked away, um, but you're here. Also those who also may have had to work. It's not always easy. And so you may have other tasks or assignments and work responsibilities. And you sometimes may have wondered Will I be able, be able to complete that final project, knowing that I have to balance my work life as well? But guess what? You made it. You're here to the finish line. Also, for those no recognizing that this year was really emotionally exhausting. It was very tiresome, knowing that we have multiple pandemics taking place in our nation. First, we had, obviously, the pandemic of the virus, coronavirus. And so that added additional stress that we had to work through and deal with. Second of all, we also had the racial and social unrest that was taking place in our society, which made it even more exhausting. But also, too, recognizing that you may not wonder how will classes be administered because of these multiple pandemics going on, or will I be able to make it to this point in journey? But guess what? You are here. Also, I'd like to just say that you're a special class. You're a special class because no other class had to deal with the type of adversity that you have went through. And to really know someone's ability and their character is really to understand how do they address when they're duressal situations. And when you have a lot of pressure and duress, you don't know how you're going to respond. But one of the things I learned is that what you go through and how you handle yourself in those situations, it lets me know that we're in good hands and let our community members know that we're in good hands and our health care system know that we're in good hands because you managed and you handled it well. So thank you. So I would just like to conclude and just say I appreciate all the work, the efforts. Um, again, recognizing our faculty, our staff members, um, they truly devote their heart, their passion. And so I'll go follow with Tiffany as she talk about being compassionate and recognizing that I also, too, hope that hopefully I won't see you too near, near in the future, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's just passing by, but not in, because of uh, any health ailments. Um, but I wish you well. I wish you much success. And I know you're going to do great things in this world and our society. So go out and continue to make a difference. Thank you.
Next, we will be honoring two students in a scholarship presentation and the Outstanding Student Award. But first, the scholarship presentation. I'd like to introduce Robin Ectel, Director of College Development and the Executive Director of the Foundation to present our Joanne Moseri Scholarship Award winner. Where is she? Oh, I can't see that far. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hear me? Okay, thank you. I'm uh, Robin Eckley, Executive Director of the Pierce College Foundation and Director of College Development for Pierce College, and I'm here to award the Joanne Mosery Nursing Scholarship today. The Joanne Mercery Nursing Scholarship was established in 2007 by Steve Mosery, former Foundation board member, in honor of his wife, Joanne, upon her departure from Pierce College as the Director of Nursing. Dr. Mosery founded the Pierce College Nursing Program and wanted to encourage students who had completed an associate's degree in nursing to continue to a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. The Moseries have been longtime supporters of students at Pierce. In 2010, the family of Dr. Mosery donated a major gift to the 21st Century Learning Campaign to name the Dr. Joanne T. Mosery Nursing Lab in her honor. Dr. Mosery set criteria for a recipient who reflected the values important to her and to the career of nursing, lifelong learning, multiculturalism, empowerment, and leadership. I'm going to describe uh, our recipient here in a moment, and um, before I start that, I'd like to ask him to approach the podium. Would Pedro Garcia please approach the podium? <laughs> Stand right here. Okay, just <laughs> face the crowd. Well, I, I, I'm trying to do social distance things. So okay. just okay. I'm going to embarrass you a little bit here. This year's recipient is Pedro Garcia. Pedro exemplifies these qualities that I just listed: lifelong learning, multiculturalism, empowerment, and leadership. He has offered himself as a resource to his cohort for when, his word, they decide to pursue their BSN demonstrating the qualities of lifelong learning for himself and his fellow nurses. Pedro is open and has been open to talking about his culture's values and traditions with peers and coworkers. During clinicals, he's had nurses ask him to care for and translate their Spanish-speaking patients because he knew, they knew he was familiar with the culture. He was willing to do that. Being Latino and Spanish-speaking is a very real benefit to our medical community. Pedro is rightfully proud of this culture and the languages he speaks and hopes to inspire others to learn about all different types of people in order to provide the best care to everyone in our community. Congratulations, Pedro. We're proud to award you the 2021 Joanne Mosery Nursing Scholarship. Next is my great pleasure to introduce Vicki Dixon, who will be presenting our uh, Outstanding Student Award. Professor Dixon began her career at Pierce College as adjunct faculty in January 2016. She became a full-time faculty member the next year and was tenured in 2020. In July of 2021, I'm very excited for her, she will become our next nursing program director. where I am confident that she will lead our program to its new heights. Please welcome my esteemed colleague, Vicki Dixon. Hello. So this quarter, the nursing program decided to start giving an outstanding nursing student award to one student in each graduating cohort who demonstrates excellence in academics, clinical practice, and leadership. You're good. 
<laughs> uh, one of the things I'm gonna go off script for a second, I just wanna say is actually the college also does an outstanding student award um, for one student per year. But we decided we have so many great students in all of our cohorts, we're doing one for every cohort. So sorry, administration, but. <laughs> <laughs> this cohort's award winner is one of our top students academically. Her leadership skills can be seen in class when she facilitates group work and encouraging and helping her colleagues practice new skills. Her clinical practice is above and beyond anyone's expectations. Her knowledge, critical thinking skills, and gentleness with which she cares for her patients make it clear that nursing is the right calling for her. Put simply in one of her own papers, I believe that I can make a positive change in people's lives. She has already done this for her fellow students, professors, and patients, and I believe this will continue throughout her nursing career. The spring 2021 outstanding nursing student is Erin Bravo. <laughs> It's now my pleasure to introduce the, the student speaker, Mike Soroy. Michael. Michael is a wonderful advocate of his peers while he is also able to see the big picture. Even during COVID, he continued to press on and represent the cohort to the best of his ability. Please welcome Michael Soroy. Thank you. Hello. Uh, milk, eggs, trash bags. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my grocery list. I apologize. Hold on. I got this. Dean Kane, faculty, distinguished guests, family and friends present with us today, and the ones watching us from home that cannot be here with us. Hi, Mom and Dad. Thank you for being here and allowing me to speak today. I want to give a special thank you to everyone on the pinning committee that worked so hard to make this happen. I'm proud of each and every one of you. We would not be here without you today. Faculty present today, we do have a special gift for you that we've prepared. So as you leave the stage today, if you wouldn't mind, there's a little cart there, um, goodie bags with your name on it. So feel free to grab one as you leave today. So we really are thankful for what you have done for us. For those who do not know me, my name is Michael Soroy, but I go by Mike. I was given the opportunity to be the class spokesperson slash liaison, or whatever you want to call me, between the students and the nursing faculty. This has been a self-rewarding role full of emotion that has taught me humility, strength, and patience. At one point in my college career, I had an amazing communications professor who taught me how to write speech. He stressed the importance of the five-day rule. The five-day rule was to write the speech and practice it for five days leading up to the event. That way you can work out the bugs and deliver an excellent speech. Well, he didn't know my future plans were to go to nursing school, and nursing students have a tendency to procrastinate, so here's the speech I wrote last night. <laughs> Why nursing? This is a question that all of us have heard since prior to starting this program. This is a question that we have been asked by the admissions department on our applications, during the nursing interviews, by our family and friends, and by our precepting nurses, who are already burnt out and really want to know, why do you want to be a nurse? <laughs> this is a question that we have all answered in some way, whether it was for the money, the fame, or personal reasons like strength and ties to the nursing profession, we all have an answer for this. My reasoning, like many of the students and established nurses here today, started because of personal ties. When I was 16 years old, I was in a life-changing accident that cost me more than I will ever know. Long story short, I fell down a hill, fractured my skull, and stayed in the hospital for quite some time. 
I suffered from a TBI amnesia, and for those non-medical folks, that is a traumatic brain injury with memory loss, which is a way of saying you cannot recall memories of the accident and events after for a short period of time. I also suffered from long-term memory loss from childhood prior to the accident and had to work really hard to piece back together parts of my life. One day, several weeks after this accident, I had a fragmented memory of a nurse caring for me at the hospital. In that moment, I could feel how vulnerable and pain and scared I was. This nurse found a way to comfort and care for me even though she knew I was probably not going to remember the care I received. I learned later in nursing school that she was upholding medical ethicals, me medical ethics. The principle of beneficent sense, I'm sorry, I still can't pronounce that, <laughs> states that the healthcare worker must do all they can to benefit the patient in each situation, something that long before nursing school I have wanted to do for others. From that moment, I knew that I had to go to nursing school. Over the last two years, I've gotten to know many of the cohort stories. Why nursing school? And much like my story, their stories have come from places of tragedy, where strength was hard to find and hope seemed far away, but somehow they managed to find strength and courage to continue. That strength and courage is illuminated here, right now, in this auditorium and on this stage. Things don't, go, things don't always go the way we plan, but let's face it, this class is resilient. We survived nursing school during a global pandemic. Over 600,000 people in the United States died, placing healthcare workers in a position to choose their family's safety over the care they may have once provided patients. But we continued. We suffered from major shortages of personal protective equipment, like masks and hospital gowns. But we continued. The average cost of toilet paper tripled on the black markets. <laughs> But we continued. We became the celebrated heroes that stepped up and cared for those knowingly putting our own lives in danger. My friends thought I was crazy to continue this program during COVID. Maybe I am a little crazy. I told them what I'm going to tell you though. The Spanish flu, the influenza pandemic, the AIDS pandemic, Ebola, COVID. There will always be some sort of infectious disease that might try and wipe us out. And there will always be nurses like us who will care for these patients. Now, I want to leave you with some facts about nurses before I end. They have a better perspective of the world. They see situations more realistically. Thrive in disruptive situations, embrace and venture, adaptive to multitasking, have a higher level of determination, they're compelled to learn new things, increased ability in observing, high levels of empathy and ability to understand others' pain and joy. They understand things on a deeper level and have a strong level of intuition. The same can be said for people with major depressive disorder, ADHD, OCD, bipolar disorder, and anxiety. Thank you. Wow. See who's going to be taking care of you? Thanks, Mike. All right, now we are going to have the next thing on our agenda is the history of the pinning ceremony. I'm actually going to, we're going to kind of go in sequential order. The next three events here is the history of the pinning ceremony. We're going to pin those graduates because that's what you came here for. Yes. We're going to do the lamp of knowledge after that, and then we're going to have the candle lighting ceremony, and then we are going to have the Rainier Nursing Pledge. So. I am going to do a little introduction of Les Watts and Mindy Saw because they will be in charge of the history of pinning, the pinning ceremony, the lamp of knowledge, and the Rainier Nursing Pledge. So I won't, you won't have to deal with me much longer. Uh, here goes. It is my pleasure to welcome the next two speakers, Les Watts, who will be giving us the history of the pinning ceremony and the lamp of knowledge, and Mindy Saw, who will lead the graduates in the Rainier Nursing Pledge. Les Watts has been serving Pierce College for 36 years. She has been a professional counselor, career and academic advisor, pre-nursing advisor, human relations instructor, orientation coordinator, and specialist in student success courses. Also part of a district-wide assessment team and is still an active member of our nurse, nurse advisory board. <clears throat> Professor Mindy Saw joined our team in fall of 2019 
as a full-time tenure-track faculty member. She's going into her third and final year of tenure and has been instrumental in being an advocate for students, helping to redesign our sim lab, implementing our new LPN to RN program, and being a supportive team member of the team. Please, let's first welcome to the podium Les Watts. Thank you so much for everybody being here today and celebrating a very special, special time of transition for these new graduates. Some of you are probably wondering, uh, why am I going to an extra ceremony here? It wasn't enough to just go through commencement and graduation and what have you. And first of all, um, as these graduates can attest to, not only is nursing one of the most challenging careers a person can embark in, but the Guinness World Book of Records actually documents the nursing curriculum as being more arduous than an engineering school. Yes? Yes. <laughs> there are very few more deserving professions to celebrate, reward, and recognize than nursing. It's become one of the most time-honored traditions at most nursing schools to have a pinning ceremony to celebrate this accomplishment. The original uh, beginnings of the pin came actually back in during the Black Plague of the middle 14th century when they had to distinguish nurses from the soldiers, etc. And most people were illiterate, so they didn't, couldn't read any name tags or anything, so they wore these great big Maltese crosses that not only came to symbolize and distinguish the nurses, but to honor them for their acts of heroism. It came to be when Florence Nightingale started her nursing schools that pins were only given to the top people in the class, the top nurses. And then they suddenly realized, wait, 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 wait a minute. All of these nurses have busted their butts to finish this very arduous curriculum. And they, every single one of them deserves the honor of wearing a pin. So over the years, the different nursing schools have designed their own pin, and the pin has come to distinguish not only the accomplishment of graduating from a nursing school, but it's also designed to represent their school of nursing. A few years ago, the nursing students redesigned the pin that the students are gonna be uh, given today um, when the lanyard is put around their neck. It is round. Most pins are normally no more than an inch in diameter. It is in the school colors, which is maroon and, and gray. And in the center, and no, normally we're able to project a picture of the pin on the scrims, but now you'll get to see it uh, with your loved one when they have it on, on their lanyard today. But it is a circle. In the middle of the circle is the Florence Nightingale uh, lamp, the lamp of knowledge. And then it has an R and an RN on the east and west. And then in the north part of the, of the circle is our Pierce College logo, which is a series of the mountain range that have come to be actually our logo for years and years and years. So what do you do with these pins now that you have them? Well, it used to be that we could wear them on our uniforms when we were on duty. Uh, but now, in the time of infection control and COVID, um, there are no pins or jewelry or rings or anything. So these pins now, uh, some nursing grads have them embroidered on their lab coats or scrubs. Um, you can still wear them at professional nursing meetings, and I hope you will get involved in your professional organization. When you go to meetings, you can wear them on your lapel or collar. Um, you can also, <laughs> as I was discussing with our faculty, you can just hang it from your rear view mirror, you know, like you do your tassel, your graduation, to remind you every time you go to work, by George, I worked hard for this pin, and it's going to remind me every single day how hard I worked and the reward that I got, and it's going to carry you, and I just couldn't be prouder to still be associated with our nursing school. I was there with Joanne when we all started this, and it was just a dream when somebody said, gosh, 
Someday, maybe Pierce College can have a nursing school because we so need those nursing schools. And now, now you are the fruit. And we are so excited to see what your careers are going to bring. May you wear this pin proudly. All right, pinning of the graduates. Are we ready? Here we go. When I call your name, you know what to do. We practice. <laughs> James Albert. Anita. Barton. Kiara Bradshaw. Bravo. <laughs> Kennedy Durant. Melissa Erdman. Pedro Garcia. Robin Halloran. <laughs> Bethany Hannah. Hannon. Woo! 
Lakeisha Harris. Nicholas Hill. <laughs> Hannah Himley. Barami Hawk. <laughs> Samantha Jones. Heidi Kamiya. <laughs> Justice Mena. Alexandra McCall. Yeah. Kristen Minson. Brianna Queen. <laughs> Bailey Rollman. Schaefer. <laughs> Michael Saroy. Jessica Sorger. <laughs> e. 
Ishra Tani. Aurora Vasquez. Caitlin White. Nicholas White. Catastrophe averted. Very good. <laughs> the next part of our ceremony involves um, the candle lighting. And uh, as sometimes the children walk in and they go, what in the world is Aladdin's lamp doing in the middle of the stage? And what does that have to do with nursing? And for those of you that know a little bit of history, this is not Aladdin's lamp. This actually is a lamp that was originally used by Florence Nightingale, historically back during the times of the Crimean War, when she, this was her lamp, this was her light as she walked among the wounded soldiers of that time. And because Florence went on to start the first schools of nursing and training nurses, it became also a symbol of passing on her lamp of knowledge. She wanted to pay it forward to train other nurses. Obviously, she couldn't do it all, so she needed to clone herself. And so over the years and through all the nursing schools, this has become symbolic of passing on, again, nursing knowledge. And what started with just one little nursing school back in Florence Nightingale's time has now evolved into over 2,000 active nursing programs across the United States. So experienced nurses, so those of us that have been in the career well, come to a time in our career where we say, OK, it's time to pay it forward. I'm tired, uh, but I, I, I think I still have some stamina and mental knowledge, it's time for me to train other people. Besides, you're the ones that are going to take care of us. And we want to make sure that we're training quality people, which all of you are. So, and of course, as has been alluded to this whole time, we have the best of the best in our faculty. And it has been um, a great, you've, you've been very honored to have such wonderful faculty. So. The lamp of knowledge is center stage. It symbolizes this nursing knowledge that's been passed on to you, our 2021 grads. So, so to symbolize this process, part of the pinning ceremony includes passing on this light of knowledge. So now, led by our program director, this will be her last time to be the leader of this, to light her candle from Florence Nightingale's candle. She will then, in turn, pass her light on to the faculty. And then we will watch this light passing on to each of you, our new grads, who have now been given the task and the mission, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> to, to pass this knowledge on through whatever area of nursing is in your future. And you don't know that. We're excited to see what that's going to be. And whether that's passing it on to you your fellow staff members or your patients, the knowledge will continue. And now, the passing of candle. Oh. 
Okay, now as a group, I'd like everybody to, to stand, all the students and all the faculty. We're going to say the Rainier Nursing Pledge together. I'd also like to invite any nurses in the audience to stand. You'll find the pledge on the third page of your program if you'd like to follow along and say it with us. So I'll get us, get us started, then we'll all say it together. You ready? Okay. As a Pierce College nursing graduate, I solemnly swear to myself and my fellow nurses that I will uphold the duty of a registered nurse to the best of my abilities. I will treat each patient that comes under my care with the same dignity, care, and compassion that is deserving to all, whether that means helping to bring a life into this world or giving comfort as a life leaves this world. I will never show prejudice towards a patient I always respect their culture, religion, and choices. I will always advocate for my patient as a patient advocate, even if I do not agree with a medical decision. I will give comfort and care to both the patient and families in all stages of care. I will always strive to learn more so that when faced with a challenge, I can adapt and give the best care with confidence without delay. I will work in a professional manner and as a member of the healthcare team. When placed in a leadership position, I will grasp it with eagerness and set the best example for those around me. I will follow the law and the code of ethics set before me, and above all else, I will remind myself every day why I became a nurse. I will strive to be the best nurse that I can, always, and to show leadership for others to emulate. Good job, everybody. Give us all the hands. I think they. I don't know what that. Uh, slideshow. Slideshow. Yeah. Everybody. Okay. So the, the next thing, you guys can turn your your candles off. They won't let us have real fire in the theater. I asked. It's a no go. Uh, we're gonna exit the stage for the slideshow.